hier is Rikus, ne? Rikus gaan nou in hierdie fucking kar, hierdie bakkie, hierdie machine, vir ons uh, parallel park, maar die, die, die bakkie gaan self park. Oké, okay, so kom ons gaan. Ja, so, al wat ons nou gaan doen, um, ons gaan hier so op die, um, in die middel console gaan ons hier die self park knopje druk, dan gaan hy nou daar vir ons sê wat ons moet doen. So nou gaan hy vir jou recht sê, gaan op voor en toe, tot hy parking vind. Ja? Um, kom ons kyk, ons gaan nou hier ingaan, so ons gaan op eerst voorbij gaan. Hij is tegen ons stop. Oké, okay, ja. Oké, okay, dan gaan we ons in de reverse set. En al wat ik nu fysisch ga doen is, ik ga die brik in die accelerator gaan ik naar Oké. Okay. So die stuur je los, ik geld hem al. En dan gaan hij nou. Yeah. <laughs> yes, see. Die bakje voor ons perfect stop. Die niet bij van mijn dag. Nou, jullie wijs precies hoe nou wij pakken om aan die pijn. Yes, see. Jy moet nou dit volg en doen wat hy vir jou sê. Holy shit! Ons driver, uh, gaan hy gaan vir ons bykie, bykie vinnig rui. Ok, is jylle rui? Ja, go, go, go. Yes! Luxem! This is the afternoon show, The Daily Drive with Joe, uh, proudly sponsored by BB Motors. Um, the BB Motoring Group Zanin has been giving me some of their fantastic vehicles to drive, including this bad boy that I'm driving this afternoon for the show. This is the upgrade to the beast. The Wild Track, the Ford Ranger Wild Track, 156 kilowatt power, if I remember correctly. And this baby, this baby can move, man. Now, what's what's really amazing? Okay, because <laughs> guys, I'm gonna post the videos that I filmed before I started the show today. Uh, went for a drive with Rikus. Um, he's one of the, the sales guys at BB Motors, Zanin at BB Ford, and um, you're not going to believe this, but this car, this bucky, can park itself. It can literally do parallel parking without you touching the wheel. So as we drive, I'm going to try and find a place where I need to parallel park and all you need to do that uh, for this vehicle to park itself is for you to find a vehicle in front of you. But look at these finishings. Look at this. Look at the stitching. Guys, this is a fantastic, fantastic vehicle. I'm, I'm like in two minds now because this morning's car this morning's vehicle I drove was the Ford Everest but guys I'm telling you this vehicle the Everest has got a lot of work to do if it wants to keep up um, because I'm still a bit of a muhu when it comes to all this new technology I think what happened was the phone the vehicle picked up that my phone needs to connect to it somehow and I, I think it was trying to do the live stream through the vehicle and you know obviously you can't do that so please do excuse me for that little bit of a hiccup like I was saying just now this wild track this is I was amazed I, I actually made a video and I'm gonna try and find a place where I need to parallel park just now maybe I should go parallel park by one of those uh, traffic lights uh, traffic roadblocks Maybe I should go in parallel park in between there. Maybe then they'll stop me. Maybe because I'll stop myself. So, um, 
in the course of our drive today, I'll find a place where I need to parallel park and I'll show you how this vehicle does it on its own. So my good friend and the uh, leader of our band, Halgar de Villiers, drives one of these bad boys and now I can see why. This vehicle is amazing. It doesn't feel like you're driving in a car. So I've been spoiled. Uh, guys, thank you very much again. BB Motor Group here in Zanin. You guys have spoiled me. I've been driving the most amazing vehicle so far and this is only my second one. So tomorrow apparently I'm going to be driving one of the Mazda vehicles. Which one is still uh, a bit of a surprise. So do remember to tune in at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning as well. My name's Joe. I am the owner, editor, journalist, photographer for Far North Bulletin. It's um, an award-winning community newspaper here in Zanin. Okay, so we're starting our trip today at the Lifestyle Center in Zanin. And still, guys, uh, remember we drove through here this morning. This place is deserted. I mean, look at it. I can't even parallel park here because there's no cause to parallel park behind. But I mean, come on. Oh. Right, so we're going to turn left in here and we're going to have a look. Okay, here we've got some cars. I don't know the reason behind there being so many people in town still. On day freaking 10 of the lockdown, you're telling me that there's so many people that haven't got their essentials at home and they need to come into town every single day to buy essentials. Surely by now you guys would have realized there's a bit of a lockdown going on. You know, not just in your town or in your country, but around the freaking world. Look at this. Look at all these people here. What are we doing? I can't understand this, guys. Do these people not care? Or could it be that they really don't have their essentials at home? All of them, every day. Do we have a police officer? Well, look, there, there aren't many queues. Um, I, can, I can see that clearly, and so can you. But, um, there's still a lot of cars here and there's still a lot, a lot of people inside the stores. So it looks better, granted, it looks better than what it did the first week. Um, not much. Well, at least not in certain sp spots. Oh, and another really cool thing about this, uh, this vehicle, is it's got voice control. It's got voice commands. So, for example, now I'm getting a little bit cold, right? So I can go and push the voice control button. Please say a command. Set temperature to 25 degrees. Did you say 25 degrees? Yes. Setting temperature to 25 degrees. <laughs> hey guys, come on! Did you see that? Oh, well, not see that. Did you hear that? That's brilliant. So you, you can control this vehicle by voice. So you really actually don't have to um, take your hands off the steering wheel while you're driving. Right, I'm going to have to show you this. So I'm going to I'm going to drive through Donnie Barrack Street quickly. Well, look, I must um, I must say again that um, this is much better. The town is um, looking much better. There's 
very few people in town. And this morning when we drive through, drove through here as well, um, yeah, there was a queue here and there at the pharmacy or at the ATM, which you can kind of expect, but nothing compared to what we saw uh, last week. So, oh, guys, this vehicle is amazing. And it's got like this super traction control thing going on. So you can, you know, there. All right, I'm going to turn into the CBD. How are you, Dave? No, um, Dave, I think it's because this vehicle is quieter inside the cab than uh, the original Beast, number one. Number two, I think this vehicle's window is clean. So that's probably why you're hearing me better and probably seeing me better. Okay, the 25 degrees was a bad idea. So let's get the wild track to quickly um, adjust the temperature. Please say a command. Set temperature 22 degrees. Did you say 22 degrees? Yes. Setting temperature to 22 degrees. <laughs> can you guys, did you, can you hear what's going on? <laughs> this, is, this is really cool. Okay, so this is Donny Yubar Street. Now, this was one of the hot spots uh, last week during the first seven days of the lockdown. There were thousands and thousands of people here. And now, um, you can actually count on one hand. I think actually, what I'm hoping for is that by next week, when you drive in town or walk in town, um, and you see another human being, um, I'm hoping that you would feel the urge to shout snap. That's what I'm hoping for. Dead, dead, dead quiet. One or two people walking along the road here on the pavement, on the sidewalk. Um, there's nobody lying, there's no street hawkers, nothing. Well done, Zanin. And you know, from the start I've said this, I never once believed that the problem would be the actual um, residents of Zanin. The problem would always be those that are coming from outside of town to come and do their shopping in Zanin. Because the Zanin residents, for the most part, have adhered to the president's call and they've stayed indoors, stayed safe. The problem has been the guys that have been coming in from the taxis, or with the taxis and the buses from the outside areas. That's been the problem. Here we're driving past Super Spa again. There's a truckload full of toilet paper and um, long life milk. You, I don't even have to tell you that this is a big difference, guys. There's, it's almost as though we are um, driving through a completely different town. There's no people. And this is remarkable and very comforting. Because it means that, um, that we're going to manage to control the curve. Right, here's the parking lot to Boxer. It was one of the spots that was terrible. Um, very overcrowded. Um, and it was it was just horrible actually, really. And I felt so sorry for the people who had to stand in those queues. And they had to um, leave themselves, themselves open to be infected because there was no social distancing controls. There was there was nothing. And half of them didn't have masks, and I'm pretty sure that half of them didn't really understand why the other half that were wearing masks were in fact wearing masks. The problem throughout this whole um, pandemic has been um, communication from government and from the leaders 
and information and education on this virus. Um, I mean, we saw old Clint Eastwood come and prance through town here um, this week and come and dance here and take selfies and stuff with his with his fans and not not really explaining much to them that they didn't really know and he was definitely not doing a, a, a good job at um, curbing the curve right so here we are at one of my favorite spots to drive through um, most probably because of the fact that it looks like a, a video game it looks like one of those post-apocalyptic video games. Um, this is the the bus rank beneath Tsaneng Mall. And there's a little bit more pedestrian traffic, I would say, this afternoon than what we saw this morning. Um, but it's a lot, lot better than what it was. There's a guy doing a deal, selling cigarettes there for cash. I heard from a friend of mine that uh, right now you can buy a packet of uh, 20s in uh, Namakhali, which is a township outside of Palabora, my hometown, and you can expect to pay up to 100 Rand for a packet of 20 smokes. So I don't know what he's charging them there because those are loose drawers. Right, so here's some people loading, it looks like this guy bought in bulk. So obviously not living anywhere close to Zanin and needs to stock up. But there's, you see, now this is what I'm saying. How can you say, like, describe to me, I would like a list from government that shows exactly, like not just like, you know, maybe this could possibly be an essential item. Um, no, we want a list from government that lists exactly the grocery items or the shopping items that count as essential items because now they've stopped people from buying cigarettes okay because it's not an essential item and they don't want people rushing to the stores just to buy a packet of smokes right that guy that i just drove past had a bucky load full of romany creams lemon creams chips knickknacks um cheese puffs and some cold drink okay and then obviously along with it he had some milli meal and he had a whole bunch of stuff now the last time i checked for me and my family to survive i didn't need 20 packets of bloody lemony creams so if you're going to say um you're not allowed to buy cigarettes because it's not an essential item and we're trying to get everybody to stop rushing to the stores then how about you stop selling everything that's not essential how about you do that? Stop selling everything that's not essential. Because now, the poor guy that, that wants to spend 30 Rand and buy a packet of smokes, along with his loaf of bread or whatever, he can't do that. But he can take that 30 Rand and he can spend it on Romany creams, maybe a chocolate and a milkshake or a Red Bull or a 2 liter Coke. But surely 2 liter Coke, a Red Bull, Romany creams, they aren't essential items. So how is the government then allowing you to buy non-essential non items, but not allowing you to buy certain non-essential items? And why is that? And I know the first time that I brought this up, a good friend of mine also from a retail chain gave me lip about it and said I should stop talking about things that I don't know about and let the, the retailers decide on the important matters and I'll, he's probably going to send me a message again just now and I hope he does really because I would like I would like to find out from him then if if that's the case um, what are essential items what do they deem essential items what do they deem to be essential okay I promised you guys two things we've seen the state of Claude weekly um, and their port of entry, which is this, as we know it in South Africa, as a taxi rank. So we've seen them now. I'm going to exit this uh, independent state. And I promised you guys that we would take a drive up 
walked through the the new well the old industrial area first of all and then I would go and see if I can talk to one of the guys at Jetty 3 and find out if they really are okay so let's go do the industrial area uh, drive through quickly you guys can have a look at your businesses see that if your premises are still okay or just reminisce about a time when you got up early in the morning and uh, rushed off to work instead of to the couch go into the stores and see that condoms are forbidden as they are not essential items really George are they really can you not buy condoms anymore what are you guys reading George's comment here that's absurd so you're telling me that that you can't buy condoms now during this time when everybody's at home and going to run out of uh, puzzles to build uh, things to paint and things to fix around the house they're going to have unprotected sex because this is a good idea South African government and then guess what the poor Oaks can't even have a smoke after getting laid Well, that doesn't, well, that's not good. That's not good at all. All right. I'm going to make a turn here. Here is um, Zanin brake and clutch. Or DS brake and clutch, sorry. We've got Limpopo packaging and we've got Sleerbook. Uh, they do granite countertops and they do tombstones, kitchens. There's Limco packaging up there, DS brake and clutches workshop up to the left. And then we've got Intelli, Grow and the Harvest Group. I don't know um, if you guys have specific places that you want to go and see, but I'm going to drive through this industrial area because a lot of our viewers have got um, business premises down these parts which they haven't seen in a very long time I must say there's almost no pedestrian traffic here um, in the industrial area it's also quite notoriously busy yeah just like well done Zanin. It still works. Okay, I'm gonna go down um, Kudu Street and then I'll turn around at the bottom and come up again via Plantasi Road. Wow, it, it feels like Yeah, I know my camera is probably making a bit of an annoying noise because there's so many bloody potholes in this road um, and the, the car keeps shaking so sorry about that drive down towards uh, PPS it's wholesale um, diesel guys and uh, paraffin right so now I'm going to drive past the infamous Talana again I've taken you guys through there twice already um, yeah here it is this is Talana I'm going to turn around because here the guys are still sitting in, in, in groups and having a chat. So I'll turn around at the bottom here and we drive up again and then look to your, what will it be, your left. Yeah, your left and my left is the same, eh? Okay. 
I look to your left and you see how many people I'm going to turn the camera a bit this way you can see how many people are sitting in groups so this Talana hostel is um, notorious for gangsters for a whole bunch of like mostly um, criminals that come and hide here that guy just asked me if I would like to buy a beer if I needed beer so so much for not allowed to sell alcohol or cigarettes eh? okay I'm very tempted to go and have a look at my favorite roadblock again actually so once I've exited Plantasi Road, I'll turn left and we'll head to the first roadblock, which is the one um, that you would pass through if you were going from Zanin to Nkuankua and Lenyenye side. So let's see if this morning we drove past there. Remember, there was like four cops there um, and they were all on their phones. They didn't even pay any attention to anybody. And um, they were stopping some people. I uh, remember we saw like a whole group of people standing there and we tried to figure out was it uh, passengers from a bus or from um, maybe a taxi. So let's see. Yesterday, if you guys will remember, yesterday afternoon show, um, I drove through the traffic uh, roadblocks three times. And not once was I stopped, and I, I was trying to get them to stop me, and they didn't, which was quite upsetting, because isn't that the reason you have a roadblock? The reason for your roadblock is um, to stop, to block the road, stop and search, guys, come on, this is basics. Turn left here, and we're going to go through this roadblock, and we're going to go through this roadblock twice. You know, it's nice also about this wild track. I can adjust the seats and everything um, electronically. <laughs> so I can go up and down. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so here we have. Here's Dupi. Dupi is one of the local traffic guys. Actually, I'm going to turn in here. So Dupi um, is here by this roadblock, and there's four uh, provincial traffic guys sitting around a table having a fat chat there. Taxis are passing in and out. No one gives a rat's ass. Uh, the people that you see uh, walking down the road now are coming from um, the bakery, it, it looks like. So they are workers from, from Sunbake, uh, the Sunbake's ba bakery over there. Um, and they're returning home. So by all accounts, it does look like um, things are very quiet. Hey, have you guys seen the video I made? Go and have a look through our videos on YouTube. It's on our YouTube channel, Far North uh, Bulletin. I did a video last year where I drove down one of these little side roads and I looked at the water pollution there. So, considering I'm driving a freaking wild track today, I think I'll just do that again. So, we're going to go down here. And um, we're going to go down to the pump station. And the last time I was here, half of, of the pump station was stolen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. Well done, GTM. Well done, Tizanin's municipality. And this, this has got Tapelo Maklala written all over it. Well done, Mr. Municipal Manager, sir. This is absolutely fantastic. Give you guys an idea, the last time I was at this pump station, there was no fencing around it at all. All of the metal of this pump station was stolen. Um, and kids, kids were walking around here and, and using this as like a shortcut. Um, and they could fall into those, those very deep manholes because all the covers were gone. But now, there's a palisade fence around it, concrete palisade fence. Well done. Well done to the greatest in municipality. This is great. Because um, there used to be a lot of pedestrian traffic through here as well. Because the guys used it to um, as a shortcut. You know, they call it a double up. They were using it as a double up. Sorry, I'm getting used to driving with this this rear-facing camera. Yeah, so they were they were crossing um, the river with a makeshift bridge, and now they can't anymore. Fantastic! How many of you are still watching, hoping that I get stuck? I bet you most of you, eh? It's a wild track, guys. It's a Ford. A Ford Ranger wild track doesn't get stuck for nothing. Wow, that was some great news. That was fantastic. Thank you, Tapelo Matlala. That was like, you know, I'm going to do a follow-up on this. That was um, that was one of the big, big uh, points of debate uh, between me and um, the municipality. Because the water, guys, was blue. The water was blue. It was so polluted. Okay, so we're going to go through this uh, roadblock again, and then we're going to go to the big roadblock. Both of those big ones were they didn't stop me yesterday. So what do you guys do um, when you're not watching me during the day? It would be quite interesting. How do you guys keep yourselves busy? Are you guys uh, miffing on the couch, watching Netflix? Are you guys doing cooking lessons, homeschooling with the kids? What? Um, tell me, let me know. I mean, I can't be the only one that's talking the whole time. It's bloody tedious for you guys, most likely. You see, here we have our traffic officers here. Not one of them is going to stop me. All of them on their phones. Every single last one of them. So we've got a great big roadblock there. That means absolutely nothing. Let's go check out the biggest one of all of them. Can you guys hear that growl? Oh. So the taxis are still operating. I don't know who's patrolling them or controlling them or monitoring them. But this is day 10 of the lockdown in South Africa. And by all accounts and from everything that we've seen, it looks a lot better. It looks like people are starting to understand the severity of this thing. And um, they're going to be staying at home. I'm just worried about how um, all of those people that were in the streets the last week I'm worried about how how many of them are now positive and they don't even know it yet. So I predict that we're going to get a, a bit of a spike in our numbers 
in the next week or two. That's if we get the right figures because Dr. Popi Ramatuba, who is the MEC for Limpopo Health, is about as useful in this situation as uh, the Fedora. So, so far there's been no leadership, nothing. And if they, if they do come out in public, you know, heaven forbid that they actually do go out in public, when they do, they manage to make it about them and about the ANC and about the coming elections. Not one of them has said anything other than wash your hands, wear a mask. I mean, come on, everybody knows that by now because that's all they've been hearing. How about some leadership from any one of you? MEC doctor, and I use that term rather loosely. Um, Popi Ramatuba, we need to hear from you. We, Your spokesperson doesn't really respond to emails. I'm still waiting for an email that I sent to your spokesperson, Neil Shikombana, who would most probably be watching this video because him and I are connected on Facebook. So I haven't heard um, anything from him on an email that I sent two weeks ago. So there's a there was a, a white guy who had an accident at home and he fell on a steak knife and the steak knife stuck into his chest and he was rushed to Fanfelden Hospital. I read the story, you guys are very, um, you guys are invited actually to read that story, you should, it's horrific. Um, and the doctor used the scalpel on him numerous times while he was still fully awake and they never gave him any anesthetic and nothing. So I sent a whole bunch of questions to Neil Shikombana, who's a spokesperson for this Dr. Popi Ramatuba, the MEC for Health, and I'm still waiting. So um, Neil, if you don't feel the need to respond to your emails from media houses because of some personal vendetta or some personal issue you have with me because I usually um, call you out on a whole bunch of stuff, uh, then please get the MEC to call me herself. That would be great. MEC for Health, interview with Bulletin, live. We could do a live interview. I'll even forward her the questions that I would like for her to try and answer. That would be fantastic, really, if we could get some live guests. What do you guys think? Maybe I should split the shows up, like the morning, uh, the drive show in the morning, um, have a guest and in the in the afternoon I have a bit of a guest and we can talk nonsense and you know um, you guys can ask questions and my guest will probably be able to answer them I doubt if that would be the case um, with any of the ministers that I've mentioned so far but there are other guys that I could get on the show we're allowed to have a, a passenger um, this vehicle is licensed to carry five people which means I can now carry one person Right, so let me know if there's a specific person that you would like for me to bring along on one of these rides. Um, and I would be more than happy to do that. Incidentally, the reason that I can still do this is because of your support and because of our official sponsor for this show, uh, BB Motors Anin. So, by all means, give me some ideas and I'll get people to come on the show. So it does look like this roadblock, which still has absolutely no cones anywhere, has got uh, officers actually doing what they're supposed to do, and they've been they're pulling over people here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe guys, maybe they'll pull me over today. Unless, of course, they're watching on Facebook and they're just waiting to get this guy. Let's pull him over. I don't know what what they're checking for when they pull over people. But I mean, me and a bunch of cars have just gone past. I, if, if we have a roadblock, isn't the idea to stop everybody and do random inspections? Isn't that the idea? Okay, I'm going to make a U-turn and go right past there again. But do you remember, even when they had the cones up and all of that stuff, and it was all pomp and ceremony, do you remember that I still drove past there 
and they never stop me. Yeah, so why would they stop me now? It's not like their minister is on the way. And even when he was on the way, they, they weren't too keen on stopping anyone. So the road that you see in front of you is um, the Deer Park Road. I tried driving this road once before, remember, but it kept on cutting out. The signal is terrible here. So I'm going to turn around again and I'm going to go through the um, traffic block, the road block again. So this is the R71 road, this is the entrance to Zanin on the R71. If you were to be approaching town from Hootspray to Pelabora, Bushbuck Ridge, uh, you'd be coming in from this side. And this is where they've got the roadblock up. I would have said put the roadblock up here, like here by Deer Park. But again, I think they probably chose this spot here because there's uh, sufficient space for them to play cards and uh, put out their camping chairs. But you wouldn't even know that this is a roadblock, honestly, because there's no signs up, there's no traffic cones, nothing. You could you could mistake that traffic cop over there for, for a chicane with his reflective jacket, because that's the only indication that you have that anything's going on there. I see there's a taxi loading people up there. Is it? Is that right? No, it's not. Now, I remember yesterday we drove here and there was a guy in a Taz and he stopped there and he picked up like five people. Like, come on. And he drove right through that roadblock. So there's a lot of traffic heading out of town. Now, this spot here where these guys are hiking from, it's also quite a contentious little issue because the, the taxi drivers who own town, right, they, they own this town and they do whatever they want to, they um, have probably got diplomatic immunity considering that all of them are residents of, or citizens of the independent state of Claude Wheatley. Anyway, so a few weeks back, the taxi drivers were stopping their vehicles on the left hand side here underneath the no stopping signs and they were actually attacking motorists who were picking up hikers because they said that um, they were stealing their income from them. How absurd is that and nothing happened to them because there's an elephant in the room right? We all know, every single one of us knows it but everyone is too scared to say it. We know that many of the taxis are operated by the traffic police. Yes, exactly. So, I have a fairly good idea that some of the taxis that are not being stopped by these roadblocks are actually the taxis that belong to the guys at the roadblocks. It's just speculation at this stage. It's not like we want to make any such drastic and dire claims. Okay, so again, I drove part, I drove through that roadblock twice. Didn't get stopped. And also, what you can't see is I'm doing these inverted comma thingies, these bunny ears in the air. Whenever I use the, the term roadblock, because it's not a roadblock, at best it's like a makeshift camping spot next to the road, and it's got a membership requirement, and the membership requirement is uh, you need to have a badge. I don't see the other roadblock yet might be approaching it okay so we've got one two three four and there's no cars behind me so we are four vehicles driving here 
I would think that at least one of us would get stopped. So maybe if I go into this lane, would you stop one out of four vehicles? No, no you won't because you're sitting on your freaking camping chair. So it would be interesting to see percentage wise how many vehicles are actually being stopped by these roadblocks. I'm going to drive past there again and then I'll head to JT3. Maybe if I, if I spin right in front of them, maybe then they'll stop me. Right, we've got the nice bright green and yellow and orange cones and an everlasting void of law enforcement. Nice guys. Maybe I should take Dave's advice. I think it was Dave who said yesterday I should drive over their traffic cones. Maybe then they'll stop me. Nah. Do you, do you guys want to see JT3 or is that getting a bit monotonous for you now? Give me ideas where you want to go rather. Remember guys, this is your show too. So I go where you asked me to go. Somebody asked uh, me to maybe head towards Palabora side. Other people asked if I could uh, go up to Hainitzburg, go check out Hainitzburg. I could and I would, um, depending on how many of you would like that, first of all. Secondly, it depends on if we have signal that side. Should pick someone up. That's a good idea, Dave. That's a very good idea, actually. Well, it's been a rather uneventful drive. Let's drive up here towards our private hospital, Medi Clinic. I still haven't found anywhere that I could make this car park itself parallel parking style. I did, however, film um, Rikas from BB Motors Ford um, doing a parallel park autonomously. So autonomously means that the vehicle does all the driving itself. And I must tell you guys, it was one of the most surreal things I've ever experienced in my whole life. Give me a ticket, man. If I want to come out, I'll go that side. Hey, long time, long time, for it. So, many clinics parking is very quiet. Uh, as I explained this morning, I'm not going to go into the um, hospital until I've spoken to the relevant people that need to give me permission to do so. Um, that would be very irresponsible to do that. Uh, there's patient confidentiality and all that stuff to to remember to bear in mind. Okay, let's see. I'm going to stop here quickly and let's see what you guys are saying. Devil's Cliff, okay, there's three for Devil's Cliff. Okay, um, there's one guy who wants to see the homeless guys again, so I'm already on the side of town. Let's make it the final stop for today's show. Let's go and see the homeless guys. 
if I'm lucky I can get one of them to speak to. I really actually don't want to end today's show because I'm having so much fun in this wild track. What a vehicle. It, it still doesn't feel like I'm driving a bucky. It's the most amazing thing. And, um, you know, once I got home this morning, I listened to um, the videos. And in the Everest, I was crystal clear because it was so quiet. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same result uh, when I listen to the videos from this wild track. Because, guys, inside it's dead quiet. Dead quiet. So, I would assume that this is the reason why a lot of the people who drive these types of vehicles um, tend to speed because it's so easy and it's so lacquer. I mean, just look at it. Just feel it. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. I don't want to spoil it for you, but next Monday is Ford Day again. So I'll be driving two other Ford vehicles. If you would like to see which Ford vehicles they are, you need to remain logged into Facebook and locked onto this channel. How's it? How's it? How's it? guy mowing the lawn and it's very nice of him that he's mowing the lawn here because this is actually the municipality's uh, ground so we've got golden acres in front of us and we're heading down the familiar path to jetty 3 where yesterday those of you who didn't log in yesterday you missed out man we had a ball of a time yesterday um, including ending the show with a guy that was doing driving lessons during lockdown because why not and we also saw a couple that were out walking their dog and after showing that video I had some other guy who tried to give me uh, nonsense about it uh, to whom I'm, I responded that if you want me to give you nonsense make sure that you're out jogging between 9 and 10 and 4 and 5 every morning and a very good place for you to go jogging would be Aqua Lane and then chances are very good that you would meet me in person and we could have a talk about it. I haven't seen him jogging, consequently he's also blocked me on Facebook. I'm sure Mark, Mark is here somewhere, Mark from Uptown Liquors, he's been photographing me doing my rounds every day because he lives in this area. It's been quite entertaining. So thank you, Mark. We're going to get to Jetty 3 now. Do you guys hear this growl? That's just bloody magnificent. Anyway, my phone was ringing, so it's obviously connected to the car, to the bucky. So this gate is the entrance to uh, GT3, and it's it's the one with the biggest hole in it in the world. Hello. Morning. How's it? Afternoon. Hi, hi, sorry. Afternoon. Um, I'm from the media. I see you're a new guy. Yeah? Yes, I'm a new guy. You're yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm from the media. I come here twice a day. Twice a day. Yeah, boy. Yes. I was here this morning as well, and I do a drive and I come and speak to Nati and to Patrick and see if the guys are still alright, the homeless guys. Okay. Let's get my mask here. So is everything still alright this side? Yeah, everything is good, good, good. Thank you. Yeah, my name's Joe. Okay, mine is Moses. How are you, Ramos? I'm good, man. That's brilliant. Yeah. Have the guys had their meal already now? Sorry? 
Did the guys have their food now? Yeah. Twenty or thirty minutes back. Okay. Thank you. Alright, thank you. Thank you, thank you. How are you, Marina? Okay, so here we are at JT3. And guys, look at all these cars here. What the hell are all these people doing here? Can you see all the vehicles here? It's like they're having a little bit of a party here. Okay, GTM guys. What's up guys? Good man. You see, I'm driving a nicer one today, no? <laughs> What's happening here? Yeah, I'm driving. Yeah? I'm driving. Sponsored. Yes. Sponsored by BB Motor Group. Okay, nice one. Yeah. Listen, are the guys being fed now? Yeah, I think it's the, I think the third, third meal, yeah. What's all the um, all the cars here for? There's a lot of cars. Is it the people feeding them? Yeah, some is some Health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and as I saw a lot of the um, the guys from the health guys and from operational health. Yeah, some cars here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The drug abuse. Drug abuse, yeah. Yeah, so we, we call them to come and talk to all those who want to go for rehabs and whatnot. So, guys, can, are they allowed to go and do shopping as well when they leave uh, during the day or must they be stuck here? These guys. Go shopping? Yeah. No. They're not allowed to leave. No, no, no. Okay. Unless they just run away in the night. Don't they pay no? Yeah, yeah. Okay guys, keep well. Cheers. <laughs> okay guys, we're in luck because um, you guys are being fed now. And here's that whim. We always see this whim here um, in town. You know this, this whim? Can you guys see him? You guys see this this worm here? He's um, always seen around town. Shame. So now he's got a loaf of bread and he's got some food. So these guys are being fed now for their third meal for the day. There's Nati. What's up? You bought a new car. That's nice. No, I didn't buy a new car. I'm being sponsored by BB Motor Group. That's nice. So you'll see me every day driving another car. This morning I was driving the Everest. Oh. Yeah. So, so just go and park know. and take the other one. Yes. Ha! I trust you. You see? <laughs> cheers, cheers, guys. Okay, so apparently all of these cars that are here are from the Department of Social Development and Sanka. And obviously the health guys and the Mapani district. So I'm quite relieved that Sanka is doing their bit as well. Wait a minute. There's guys brying. Do you guys see this? These guys are brying here. Do you see this? They're brying. Nice. Having their own little bries here. So, these guys are doing their little private little parties here. And the reason for that um, escapes me because they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to be using this as a little, a little jaw for themselves. And you can't tell me that they're brying the food to feed the guys. They're brying it here because that's not true. According to the Mapani District Municipality, 
all the food for these guys um, is being cooked and prepared off site and it gets delivered here so what the hell are these guys doing brian it's like a major little party going on here I'm going to turn back this way and I will turn the camera in such a way that you can see what I'm talking about. These guys are having a braai. They're having a little party here. And they're not the homeless guys. These are the, the security and the officials and stuff. Great. It was good, good to have you here, Alpheus. So I'm turning the camera this way so you guys can see the officials sitting here and they're having a nice little braai. It would be quite interesting to know if these guys are enjoying the same food that um, the homeless guys are enjoying. But hey, if you can see what I'm seeing, this looks like a right party here. I'm just going to stop and pretend like I'm doing something. Uh, you guys can't see did you see the guys here to my right that are having a little fat jaw here a little braai so this is the homeless shelter jetty 3 but it looks like it's turning into a, a house party right guys uh, thank you very very much again for listening to my show or logging into the show of uh, the afternoon drive so uh, the next one will be tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and um, there will be a surprise vehicle for me apparently I'm going to be driving a Mazda tomorrow which model Mazda it's going to be the BB group has kept secret so it's going to be as surprising to me as it is to you uh, the daily drive with joe is very proudly sponsored by the bb group the bb motors group in zanin they um, are keeping us on the road and providing me with fantastic vehicles to drive in so while i'm going to um, end off the show i'm going to do it with a little bit of a drive so you guys can experience the power of this beast okay feel this wow you know it really it feels like I'm driving the focus you know the Ford Focus, the, my vehicle that's been standing at a mechanics uh, workshop in our town for longer than a year. It's been at two mechanics already in this town. So I haven't seen my vehicle in two years. So earlier today, before the show, Rikas took me on a bit of a drive. So I'm not going to be able to do what, what he did because they've done advanced driving courses um, and I haven't. So I don't want to take a chance. But I made a video and I'm going to upload that too. You guys must see that it is absolutely insane. This vehicle can parallel park on its own. It parks itself, literally. So... Um, guys, my name's Joe. It's been an absolute pleasure driving you guys around again this uh, afternoon and this morning. Uh, do me a favor, follow my page, like this page, invite your friends to like and follow this page, share all of our videos. Today's drive, uh, this afternoon's drive was slightly less um, exciting than this morning's one and yesterday's one, but uh, we're going to get some guests on the show and you guys can ask them some questions um, anything related to the corona 
outbreak and the, maybe some legal stuff as well. I'll get my good friend Anita Campbell to join me. I'll get Desiree from Avolt, who's the constituency head for the DA. She can join me. I might even get uh, another good friend of mine, Tapelo Matlala, who is the municipal manager for the Greater Sanin Municipality. Get him on the show. Um, yeah, so you guys can ask them some questions. But in the meantime, head over to YouTube, Far North Bulletin on YouTube. Check out our channel. Click the subscribe button and you'll get all of our latest content. Um, we also have Instagram page. Go over there, look at all the pretty stuff. Both Rulof and myself are actual award-winning photographers. We post our photographs on there. Um, and yeah, join on join in the discussions on Facebook. That's what it's about, guys. We need to learn to communicate with each other. We don't have to always share the same views. That's not the point. But we can um, we can have a decent discussion about uh, relevant topics without climbing down each other's throats. So yeah, have a good evening, guys. Keep safe and see you tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. Ciao.